everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Utopia. We have a winter wonderland of images to share with you because today we venture into the Uinta Mountains with our shovel, beacons, and intrepid spirit to go yurt skiing in the backcountry. You won't want to miss this because our adventure coincided with one of the worst storms of the season. And later in the show, we ask the question, do we really have the greatest snow on earth? It says it on our license plates, so it must be true, right? Well, not so fast. Today on Utopia, we talk with Professor Jim Steenberg about the greatest snow on earth and how climate change will affect the future of snowpack and the ski industry. But first, for those who have not spent time in Mongolia, Siberia, or the backcountry of Utah, you may have never seen a yurt. It's basically a type of domed teepee used for lodging. Throughout Utah, you can rent yurts year-round to increase and enhance your time outdoors. In the next few years, we will explore many of these spots because they are totally awesome. Our first stop, the Tuna Yurt in the Uinta Mountains, east of Salt Lake City. So put on a parka and come for the trek. During the winter months among the aspens, oaks, and big tooth maples of the Uinta National Forest, hardly a hint of color escapes the white cloak of snow covering the landscape. Well, maybe a hint. If you seek adventure and a little solitude and you want to ski deep powder, find a yurt. It's not a five-star hotel. In fact, there's no running water. But the skiing is often excellent, and crowd size is always optimal. Today, we visit the Tuna Yurt, located in the western Uintas off of Norway Flats Road, owned by the Utah Nordic Alliance, or Tuna. Although only 50 miles from Salt Lake City, weather dictates the level of difficulty for this excursion. One extreme will be exemplified in what follows. Forecasted to snow about 20 inches in two days, this outing was an adventure from the doorstep. get to the parking lot at the trailhead, drive 11 miles east of Camas on State Road 150 Mirror Lake Highway. The trail begins on the north side of the highway and is labeled Service Road 035, also called Norway Flats Road. Of course, you won't see much of the road when it's buried under two feet of snow. The trek to the Tuna Yurt from the parking lot rounds to about 3.5 miles, with an elevation gain of 1,000 feet. Most days, the ski-in will take roughly three hours. However, trudging through knee-deep snow with heavy loads turned this trip into a seven-hour slog. The Uinta Mountains are part of the Uinta Wasatch Cache National Forest, and as the name implies, it represents three separate zones that are managed together by the U.S. Forest Service. These areas are managed not only for livestock and wildlife, but also for protection of crucial watersheds. The word Uinta is a Native American word meaning pine tree or pine forest, and the Uinta National Forest is considered urban because the forest is heavily influenced and impacted by the million plus people living in close proximity. When you commit to engaging in winter sports, you commit to a certain level of harsh weather at times. This was one of those times. Many yurt skiing excursions, like this one, depend upon an early registration with a first come, first reserved policy. This makes predicting the weather for your future trip impossible, but with storms comes more snow, and with more snow comes more powder skiing. 
So our group soldiered through the near whiteout conditions. Records indicate that the annual temperature in this area ranges from an average low in the mid-teens to average highs in the low 90s. Annual precipitation averages approximately 16 inches, and it seems like half of that has come down since this trip started. The Norwegians have a saying, there is no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. This uphill shuffle against the flurry reminds us of why this wisdom is timeless. Waterproof outer shell, warm breathable layers, and a base layer that wicks away the sweat. The cool down that occurs when resting can progress to chills if a moderate temperature is not maintained. So it's important to avoid overheating. Arriving at the yurt extinguishes anticipation with a rush of relief, but there's work to do before relaxing. Starting a fire and drying gear is the first priority. Turns out this yurt has a disco ball, which instigates an impromptu dance party. The tuna yurt is 18 feet in diameter, with a covered porch for gear. It can comfortably sleep eight and is outfitted with a wood stove and a supply of cut and split wood, a propane cooking stove and lamps, and cooking equipment. Natural light generously glows through a translucent dome as long as the snow has been cleared from the roof. An added bonus the freshwater spring that flows by the yurt, minimizing the amount of water packed in. This crew utilized the abundance of fresh snow for cooking and drinking water by boiling it on the propane burners. You can expect to bump your head a few times as you settle into yurt life. The upside of these close quarters is that the cozy structure heats up quickly. This yurt was built at an elevation of 8,600 feet overlooking Boulder Creek. The surrounding slopes are low angle, perfect for beginner to intermediate skiers. And although this area is less prone to avalanche danger than steeper spots, a beacon, shovel, and probe should still be carried. Most of these hills provide three to four hundred feet of vert, making them short shots that are easy to climb. Pockets of sunshine break through the two-day storm, creating the perfect backdrop for fresh pow laps in this remote and very special place. Most yurts, this one included, require a certification before you'll be allowed to rent the yurt. The class lays out the basics for yurt care and maintenance, from keeping wood stocked in the foyer to finding the propane tank in the middle of winter. This orientation ensures a pleasant experience for all future guests. As this amazing three-day adventure comes to a close, we are reminded about the importance of national forests here in the United States. These areas are managed, not owned by the Forest Service. They are owned by every U.S. citizen at birth. So get out and enjoy your Forest Service lands, an important part of our utopia. Stay tuned, when we come back, we will answer the question, does Utah really have the greatest snow on earth?